All right, folks, I'm back. I'm going to stand by a little bit so some of you come on. I understand that there was no audio so during my last broadcast. So let's find out what's going on here. And I'm going to find out very quickly if we have any audio. We seem to be having some technical difficulties from time to time. And I want to make sure that everything's fine. Okay. Hey, Bill, I see you're on. Do we have audio? Okay, Michelle, do we have audio? I'm just waiting to get messages, folks, from people who could uh, hear me. Do we have audio? I hear you. Okay, folks. <laughs> I'm glad. Listen, I'm the worst guy when it comes to some of these technical things regarding um, uh, audio and connections and all that. In fact, I'm, I'm glad that you're, you're all back on. Folks, uh, I'm going to uh, go over what I said earlier with regard to the president's agenda what has happened in the past 48 hours regarding the G7 summit and what's going to be happening in North Korea, uh, uh, in the North Korean summit. First of all, uh, before I came on Facebook Live, I did a broadcast to the people living in the uh, you know, Far East, uh, the Middle East, and in Europe. And uh, the focus of the broadcast was what happened at the G7 summit. Uh, the relationship that President Trump now has with uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and the other Western leaders. Now, it's important to make something very, very clear. And this is what I explained to people overseas just a half hour ago. It should have been no surprise to anyone at the G7 summit, especially Justin Trudeau, that the president went in there with one thing on his mind, and that was to keep his promise to the American people that they would come first. So the American people, the taxpayers, who the president made so many promises to were on his mind and he kept his word. 271% tariffs against the United States farmers and other industries. That's a bit high, don't you think? And yet, and yet Prime Minister Trudeau thinks that's okay. Now, President Trump went into the G summit meeting, open mind, open arms, said, let's sit down, let's have a conversation. Apparently, President Trump walked away from there believing that in the joint statement that these European leaders, these G7 summit leaders, uh, came together and decided they're going to work together with President Trump. But now we know that wasn't the case. The president was misled, folks. He gets on his aircraft. He starts headed towards Singapore. And Prime Minister Trudeau decided to hold a press conference and basically in fact, stab President Trump in the back with his words. He called the position, the policies that President Trump brought to them and the position he took regarding to tariffs insulting. Prime Minister Trudeau said that the President of the United States and his policies were insulting to him and his country. What do you call, Prime Minister, 271% tariffs on the United States for many, many years? That's not only insulting, it's a robbery. And the president of the United States is protecting the purse of the American taxpayers, just like you are protecting the purse of the Canadians. So what we have here is a long history of administrations from uh, beginning with way, way back up to the Obama administration, just rolling over and letting the G7 summit members and basically the EU do whatever they want to the United States of America and the American taxpayer. See, here's the, the issue, folks. President Trump is a businessman. The mainstream media and those who are in the European Union and those at the G7 summit, they don't know how to deal with a businessman. They know how to deal with a politician who will lie through their teeth, who will say anything, whatever it takes to make a deal, even at the expense of the American taxpayers. That's what they're used to. Now they're up against a businessman, an individual who will not say anything to make a deal, an individual who will make sure that the deal is fair. And that's my point also. The president of the United States hasn't asked for anything more than a fair deal to make sure that the American taxpayers are not cheated. But we've been cheated for many, many, many years. Hey, look, did you hear what the president said last week? He said, look, I don't blame them. I don't blame the European Union leaders. I blame the past administrations of the United States for making bad deals. I mean, what more can the president, I mean, how much more can he be clear? He's insulted no one. He's been very strong in his position. 
even before he got to Canada. And they want the world to believe that they're shocked and surprised and insulted at the position the president took. If anyone should be insulted, we should be insulted. Hey, folks, I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. I am tired as a middle-class American taxpayer of paying everybody else's way. Really, I am. I Look, at I paid for my kids' education. I paid uh, for, for weddings. I paid for this. I paid for that. Uh, and, and I'm glad to do it because I go to work and I make money to pay my way. I am not going to go to work and make money to pay everybody else's way. That's on a small scale. One individual, me, and I'm sure one individual like you who could understand that and empathize with that. Now, if you look at the broader, the bigger scale, the president of the United States made it clear that the United States taxpayers are not going to pay anybody else's way anymore. We'll gladly pay our way, so long as it is fair and equitable. So this is what they cannot stomach. Now, I've heard from Canadians this morning after I tweeted out the fact that Prime Minister Trudeau did in fact, did in fact, uh, stab the president in the back, misled the president, and in fact, frankly, mis misled his own countrymen. So obviously the Canadians are upset at us. Everybody's upset at us. The mainstream media, blame, blame President Trump for everything. Look, it's gonna snow in July. There's gonna be this freak snowstorm. We're gonna blame President Trump. You see, the fact of the matter is folks, they don't know what to do with regard to how the president is doing business because he's super transparent. President Trump does not sit in a back room and pat these guys and gals on the back and say, hey, look, he doesn't lean over like Obama did. Remember with the open mic? When President Obama leaned over to Vladimir Putin and said, look, I'll take care of you after the election, that wasn't meant for you or me to hear. We don't have to worry about that with President Trump. He'll just say it wide open in front of a camera, in front of a world stage. They don't know how to deal with that. I think it's refreshing. I think it's great. So, 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 so here's what's going to happen. In my view, regarding the G7 summit, these world leaders are going to come to their senses, and they're going to realize that they're dealing with a man of his word, a man who will not back down, a man who will not apologize for being an American and an American president and an American leadership, a man who believes in strength and honor and dignity and believes in this country and believes that it is his duty and it is his obligation to protect the American taxpayer and not be concerned about every other person on the face of this earth with regard to economic finances. What is wrong with that? So this is why they're all upset. And they're gonna go on and on and on and, and look, they're politicians, he's not. But at the end of the day, they'll come to their senses and they will come to the table and meet the demands of President Trump, which by the way, are reasonable. Now, President Trump is on his way to Singapore. Now the mainstream media, unfortunately, not all, but some of them and others who are progressive Democrats and liberals want to see that fail. Could you imagine, could you imagine a summit that's going to impact your life and mine and in particular the lives of our children and our grandchildren? They want to see it fail. Why? Because they don't like President Trump. Who in their right mind, who in their right mind would want to see such a summit fail? When these Hollywood clowns, and I, I you know, I don't use that language, but I, I, I really uh, know no other uh, word to identify, to define people on these late night talk shows other than clowns now, because they get on there and they add no credible substance to the conversation. They joke about uh, the uh, nuclear war. They joke about the fact that the president is sitting down with a North Korean dictator. This is nothing to joke about. This is nothing to make fun at. They should be standing up there saying, look, you know what? Maybe they don't like the president. Maybe they're not proud of him and all, but they should Get out there and say, I hope it works. For the sake of our children and grandchildren, I hope President Trump succeeds. I believe, folks, at the end of that summit, maybe not on June 12th, but as we move forward, there'll be more and more meetings that you're going to see a formal end to the Korean War. Wouldn't that be exciting? Wouldn't that be a great accomplishment? What are they going to say? What are the liberals going to say? What's Nancy Pelosi going to say? What is anybody going to say when that happens? He'll find something to say, but it will fall on deaf ears. How do you argue the point that the unemployment rate in this country is at an all-time low? 
How do you argue a point that the unemployment rate in a minority community is at an all time low? How do you argue the fact that the economy is getting stronger and stronger and stronger and the stock market continues to skyrocket? How do you argue the point that the American military is, at, is, is growing in great, great strength to do what? Peace through strength, where no one on earth will ever challenge us like we were challenged when Barack Obama was in office. How do you argue the point that President Donald J. Trump has led the way all the way to success with the Make America Great Again agenda? But they argue the point. They could argue all they want. I said earlier, and I'll share this with you again, many people ask the question, how does the president address these critics? How do I, look, I get so much hate stuff. I mean, I, I've never gotten more hate stuff in my entire life than since I started this journey with working with the president's team to get him reelected. That's fine. Listen, it comes with the territory. But, but, but the question people always ask me is, how do you deal with these critics? How do you deal with the hate? Folks, I don't need, I don't need to stand up and hit them back. You know how I deal with it? The same way President Trump is really dealing with it. Succeed. Just succeed. Not to say nothing. Yeah, at times we're going to have to push back. I do when I'm on CNN. I do when the liberals start to hit publicly. I'll hit back. You've seen that. And you know the president does it. But they cannot cope with and win over success. So they manufacture stories. And I look at, I, I very rarely use the term fake news. I'm going to use it more because I'm seeing it myself, folks. I'm seeing how President Trump, think about this. President Trump is at the G7 summit. President Trump is working to bring peace to the Middle East. President Trump is now going to Singapore to, to, to a great historic event. And what on earth does the mainstream media focus on? What do they focus on, folks? Everything but that. I'm not even going to mention the words that they're focusing on, but everything but, everything but these great accomplishments. How do we overcome that? Right here. Facebook Live. YouTube Live, all of the social media platforms at our disposal. And you, you are so important to us, so important to the America Winning Coalition, so important to the President of the United States. And before I share with you how important you are and what you can do to help out, there is one more topic, controversial. I mean, it's causing the mainstream media and people like Senator John McCain to explode. And by the way, Senator, I want to share this with you. When you go on Twitter and you tell the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, that although the president is not with you, the American people are with you, you're wrong. We are with our president. We, the American people, are standing with our president. How dare you speak for me and speak for everyone else in this country? And look, those of you who don't like the president, who don't support him, I'm not going to speak for you. But I'm speaking for what I believe is the majority of Americans in this country are proud of this president who are standing with him. So, Senator McCain, don't you think it's time to kind of, you know, re retire? You know, I mean, you've served this country well in war. You Look, in the early days of you being a senator, believe me, you served the country well. As time went on, you're beginning to really screw up. All right. You really are. And maybe it is time to retire and write your memoirs. You know, keep the Keep, keep your legacy one that will be dignified. But when you make statements like that and you go against our president, shame on you and shame on anybody at this point in time who's going out of their way to hurt President Trump because when you're hurting him, you're hurting the country. And when you're hurting the country, you're hurting the people. And when you're hurting the people, keep in mind that the people of the United States, the little ones, the children, by the way, those who are born in this country and the unborn who are yet to arrive in this country, you are hurting them because we want as parents, as grandparents, as political leaders in each of our communities, we want our children to have an America that's strong and secure. We want it economically strong and safe. So when you go out of your way to try to hurt the president and his policies, and the hard work that all of us are doing to keep this country secure, you're hurting all of us. So, Senator, why don't you just think about that and the people of Arizona who are listening and watching and part of the American Winning Coalition, 
write him a letter, give him a call. Don't be mean or nasty. Look, the guy's got medical problems and I do pray that somehow there's a miracle that he recovers. I don't want to see anybody hurt and nobody go through hell like that. But when it comes to politics, you need to give this senator a call and let him know that, Senator, you're going down the wrong road. You know, Senator McCain is a Cold War warrior thinker. I, I, I analyze what he's saying. And, and, and what he's saying is he's using the toolbox that we used during the Cold War, which leads me to my topic right now regarding Russia. The president of the United States was widely criticized for saying, where's Russia? We need Russia here at the G7 summit. So the mainstream media, Senator McCain and others go off uh, uh, on, on an unbelievable rant about why Russia, why Putin, what's this romance, this bromance. Folks, I've studied Russia closely when I was in the Navy, when I was military in, in military intelligence, and I still follow Russia. I still look at their military order of battle. I still study their politics. And you know what, folks? They're an emerging power. They're a growing power. We're going to have to deal with Russia. One way or the other, we are going to deal with Russia. We don't want to deal with them militarily. We want to deal with them politically and diplomatically. So President Trump, I believe, has taken that biblical scripture that says, without vision, the people perish. President Trump has a vision for this country and perhaps for the world. So what does he do? He decides, we know Russia is an emerging economy. We know Russia is an emerging power. Why not start to think about bringing them to the table and sitting down? Better to have Russia sitting at a table with us than fighting with them on a battlefield. But the John McCain's of the world, the Cold War warrior thinkers in the Senate and in the Congress and in the uh, uh, Republican and Democrat Party, they're only thinking of themselves. They're thinking of their political survival. The president and those of us who support him are thinking of the survival of the American people, not only now, but in years to come. But I'll have more to say about that later on in the week. So I'm going to bring these broadcasts to you. I've got to find a time uh, and a night that I could regularly broadcast that most of you are watching. We have a pretty good audience watching now. Maybe Sunday afternoons are good. I don't know. Summertime's coming. I don't think people are going to bring their electronic equipment to, be to beaches. But maybe on a uh, some weeknight, maybe you could help me. I'll tell you what. Email me, text me, whatever way you can communicate with me. Tell me what night you think is best and time you think is best for us to go on the air live. Because, folks, I want you to think about this. The mainstream media, they're not broadcasting the good stuff. Why do I go on these TV networks that are overseas? I learned something, folks, a few months ago. Here's what I learned. People overseas in Europe, they only get CNN. They don't get Fox. They don't get One American News. They don't get outside of the story. So CNN, MSNBC, liberal progressive media outlets are the only things that these people are getting. So the only way we could reach them is through getting on some of these overseas broadcasts and through social media platforms. So this is why we're on the air. When I say we, we've got a team of 12 to 15 people on the president's campaign advisory board who's doing exactly what I'm doing. And we have people in New Jersey, in every county, who look at our social media platforms and share and spread the word. They're part of the American Winning Coalition. And I'm asking you right now, at the end of this broadcast, to become part of our coalition. We will never ask you for contributions, never ask you for donations, never ask you for anything financial. You're never going to hear me say, dip in your pocket pocket and give us a donation. We don't want that. Spend your money on your family. Spend your money wisely. And then when the time comes for the president's reelection, we're going to probably no doubt be part of asking you then to send the contribution directly to him and his victory fund. But the American Winning Coalition, we're not in this for the money. We're, we finance ourselves, folks, okay? People have asked me, gee, how do you finance? We, we do it ourselves, okay? I don't want your money. But what I do ask you to do is this. I ask you to get in touch with me. Now, I'm going to post this in a few minutes, and you will see the video, and you'll see my email. Email me, and all you got to do is say, please add me to your list. We put you on our mailing list. Every week, you get a Make America Great Again update. 
links to the White House press office, you get invitations to all our events, and on and on and on and on. We're growing, folks. We're growing by the thousands. But what do we want you to do? It is simple, folks. We want you to take what we send you and share it. Share it. See that little button on your computer there when I get off the air here and push post? You're going to see share. Just share it. Share it to the thousands, the thousands of people that you know. Just share it. And then they will respond to us, and we grow, and we grow, and we grow. That's how we're going to win by a landslide in 2020. Democrats and liberals, progressives, they're ready for us, but we're ready for them. So that's it in a nutshell. Now, you see, we're at 20 minutes. I promised that I would be on the air 15 minutes, but I think we'll make it 20 minutes every time I'm on the air. No more. Okay? And then we'll come back again. If you have any questions, email me. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, email me. And if you have anything that you would like me to share with the American people, send me a short paragraph. Give me permission to say it here on the air, and I'll do that. So look forward to some more of our broadcast, folks. Uh, I'm going to post my email. It's steve at awcnj.us. It's going to post it, uh, or it's going to show up on this posting as soon as I post it. And look, it, I just want to thank you for really, really being strong and tough and diligent in helping the President of the United States. We got a great journey ahead. The sun is coming up in America, folks, and it's going to be a bright, shining sun that will be on this country for many, many decades to come. Believe me. Why? Because we have a president who cares about the American people. And together, we will make America great again. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless the president of the United States.